One, two, three. Hello, this is Ryan Riccatelli with ASNews.net and the Kiteboarder Magazine, and we are in the Ocean Rodeo booth at Surf Expo uh, in Orlando, and I'm with John Zimmerman. Uh, he's the man who's going to take us to the line today. Right on. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go over the boards right now. Uh, for this year, what we did is we expanded on our highly success successful Mako lineup of boards, uh, and we also introduced a couple new shapes of Zens, and so I'll go over that with you right now. Uh, Coming to hold that for you? Sure. Yeah. Great. Last year, we sold a lot of these boards, the Mako 150 by 40, it's the Mako Wide, we called it. It's a very deep concave board. It's also very wide. This board really excels in the chop, excels in, uh, in wave conditions, excels uh, all, all, all water riding. The 150 by 40 proved to be so popular that we introduced a new shape. Put it right beside it. 10 centimeters shorter, the 140. We expect that both these boards are going to be very well for this season. And the single fin, what's the concept behind that? Single fin is basically you're riding on the rail a lot, just like you would on a snowboard. And so the fin gives some, gives some stability, but you're also using the rail to give you, give you a good edge up wind. This board is wonderful for all, all riding styles. As a beginner, it's going to get you up wind nice and quickly. As an advanced rider, it's going to give you a really nice platform to get over choppy water, uh, smooth out any type of coastal chop you get. And if you can get up onto the waves, you know, you can see even in this poster here, Philippe's right up on a wave face. The board's got a lot of float to it. It's going to, you're going to be able to depower the kite and ride the wave really nicely. Nice. So those are the Makos that we got this season. Last year, we, uh, we introduced the Zen, and we, we put into it a wood core. This year, we just built a lot on it the same way. So it's the same thing. It's a, it's a standard four fin setup. It's got seven mils of concave, flattens out to the rails. Very thin rail uh, and wooden construction. It's going to give it a nice flex. The really nice thing about the wood is that, as unlike a foam core, this thing's going to retain its pop for years to come. So it's going to keep it's going to uh, keep springing back. You can load it up, send it next year, and do the same thing. For this year, we have three shapes. This here is Jeremy's model. It's the 129 by 39. We also have a 135 by 41, which is a much more conventional shape for riders 180 pounds or bigger and then 135 by 43. And so that's the, uh, the Zen lineup. And it comes in the same colors as you see the Mako lineup in. Jeremy Chone, yes. what's up, Jeremy? <laughs> uh, we do have a directional this year as well. Officially, the directional is in the uh, Mako family because there's nine mils of concave on it. Uh, it's a three fin board. Now, last year we had this in the family as well. Uh, what we did with it this year though was we moved the foot straps farther back give you a bit more direct feel in, the, in turning. And we also lighten it up. It's about half as light as last year's one. Uh, we, we really built last year's board tough to withstand some beats. This year we took a little bit of it out of it just to, uh, just to lighten it up for those that wanted it. So that's the uh, Mako Surf, we call it. Looks that's good. our board lineup for this year. Awesome. Now, let's talk about the kites. Uh, you know, you introduced a new concept last year, and uh, why don't you talk about the 09? Okay, so last year, as Ryan said, we did introduce vents on our kites. We called it Venturi Technology. Uh, the vents, what they do is essentially to help offset the onset of a stall. As the kite's flying at normally an angle of attack, air is flowing over evenly. As you increase the likelihood of a stall, you're cupping more wind. Essentially, you're introducing turbulence in the backside of the wing. Those vents are going to open up, air is going to flow through, suck air back on the backside. It's called relaminating the airflow, but what it's going to end up doing is preventing a stall, unhooked riding, beginners learning how to jump, they get nervous, they pull in too much. It's going to prevent that. We've also found, incidentally, and this is really kind of something funny, that with smaller kites, particularly the sixes and the eights, when you're jumping it, it gives you more loft coming down. It's, a, it's something we weren't expecting, but it's wonderful. You're jumping a six in a really windy condition, you come down nice and soft. Uh, we've been enjoying that. For 09 with the rise, we really didn't want to mess with success. It was an incredibly popular kite last year. So what we did is we focused on three areas of improvement that we got feedback from our riders on. One of them was we thinned out the leading edge and the struts. So we have a little bit more of an efficient airfoil. Uh, we actually took it out on race day last month at Midnat and we had an 08 and an 09 lining up side by side. You can see that the 09s would point just a little bit higher. Slightly more efficient airfoil. The other thing we, we did was uh, we took refinements on the on the setup of the bridle setup and so last year we found that the where the attachments of the bridle were set up a lot of riders were only using one setting 
uh, and we were finding that some of the other options weren't really pay paying out for them the way that they should. So Ross really took a look at the way that the kite was, was set up and we moved around some of the attachments and so this year the back attachment on the front is going to give you basically your best, best trade-off between bar pressure and wind range. For those of you that are interested in racing, or those of you that are interested in teaching beginners and want more positive feedback on the bar, or, or the ability to get wind faster, you can use the forward test attachment setting. It's going to give you a wider wind range, much more deep power. For racers, it's going to get you up wind faster because it's a farther forward tow point. For beginners, it's going to give you more bar feedback. It's going to give you a sense of exactly what that kite's doing. Uh, generally speaking, riders like Ryan and myself, we'd keep it on the back setting on the front, back setting on the back for maximum turning speed. Uh, beyond that, we did take a look at basically refining small things, so adding a little bit more screening on the kite to give feedback to the rider as to what they could do with the kite to manipulate its setting. And the other thing we got feedback on from our riders was that the turning of the kites, particularly the 8, 10 and 12, were ideal. They didn't want to change it. The 4 meter, the 6 meter for really high windy conditions in places like the gorge, they maybe turned a bit too fast. The 14 and the 16 meter, they likely could be turning faster. So what we did this year is we changed the whole setup of the kite across the range to turn more like the 8, 10, and 12. And so there's two advantages to that. One is obviously the kites at a smaller size will be more stable, more reliable, less zippy. Bigger kites are gonna come around faster at a kite loop for you. The other thing that's nice though is if you're in a really variable wind condition area and you're changing your kite up a lot over the course of a day or the course of a week on a vacation, you're gonna be able to jump on your kite and say, oh, this feels exactly like it did yesterday, even if it's four meters different. And so we're really excited about that. The turning range is a much more compressed range of the kites this year. That's so great. Those are the refinements we made on 09. Well, let's go check out the bar. Okay, for sure, that's the good news. Okay, so this is our new, we're calling it the SLE Kite Bar 2.0. This is basically the same bar as we sold last year and so far as the mechanics of it all. But uh, we, did, we did change, uh, the biggest introduction essentially is the molded chicken loop. You'll notice when you unhook, the chicken loop feeds into the bar so you can actually manipulate where it aims. Mm -hmm. Makes hooking back in quite simple. The safety on here, it's a big red eject. It's quite, it's quite safe and simple. Essentially, you slide up the cuff and it releases out of the bar. The really nice thing about this, there's two things. One is it's dead simple to reset. You can redo it on the water quite simply. The other one is this pin is never under load. So as you slide up, it releases cleanly. You're never gonna have, if you're being dragged, you're never gonna have an issue with the pin being jammed because you've got too much weight on it. So there's never any weight. From a rider's perspective, there's a number of advantages that this new chicken loop offers as well. Instead of last year, we had you hooking off here for your leash. That introduced a problem. If you brought out too much trim, you ended up with, with a loop hanging down with the leash. It gets caught around your knee and whatnot. This year, what we've done is we've got you leashing off back here. Two advantages to that. One I just mentioned gets that loop out of the way. The other one is if you do safety your kite, you reach up, there's no cleat involved. It's very simple to reset. And so, again, on the water, reset after a crash. It's really easy to re-ride. Dead simple. Riders also are constantly telling me they want a bigger chicken loop or they want a smaller chicken loop. What we've done is we made this this actual loop itself replaceable, so that you can get it. You can buy a smaller one or a larger one or this medium-sized one that comes standard. Likewise, uh, especially in places with really fine sandy conditions, they were getting sand in here. It was burning out the line on the inside. They're snapping their chicken loop after four or five months. We've gone from two lines inside here to four to make it tougher. We've <laughs> also sealed it up so that. Right here, this is a closed seal area, so we shouldn't be able to get any sand in there. That's important. If you do decide, and maintenance is important, there's working parts on the kite, you should be maintaining your kite regularly. If you do decide you want to replace them, two bolts come out, this thing slides out, and a new one plugs in, it's two bolts back Simple. in, you're good to go. Simple. Likewise, up here, the webbing here is replaceable, and the chicken or the donkey dick is removable, should you not wish to ride with it. Uh, otherwise, the bar itself is a very simple setup. I'll show you the stopper right now. The stopper is like we had last year, it slides into place. What we did this year though was actually kind of an interesting thing. This red clip moves up and down and so currently it's in a relatively down position. By doing that, it means that when a bar comes up, I can actually push through. So it gives me enough, enough resistance to be able to spin the bar, but if I want to, I can move it out of the way for extra safety or whatnot. If I don't like that, if I want to make it stiffer, all I need to do is take this clip and move it up the loop. And so now we're up here at basically the tightest position possible. That's a very difficult thing to push through on. You can see I'm straining rather hard to do that. 
So this is a nice innovative innovation for riders that want variable additions to uh, how the stop reverse. Finally, just keeping things clean, we wanted a nice clean aesthetic bar. <laughs> we put the uh, any type of line adjustments under here. The only other major change for the year was we went to uh, 850 pound test lines. So these lines are thinner than last year's 650s, but they're heavier tests, they're 850. So you get a performance advantage of thinner lines. You also get uh, you also get the advantage of an 850 pound test line set. So nice. Yeah, that's our. Why don't you take us through the harnesses real quick? Okay, or the no problem. This harness is super popular for us. It's called the Session Harness. It was, in our opinion, the first ever harness designed exclusively for kiteboarding. You'll notice in this closed setup, there's no potential for a line snag. Lines will just slide off of it all the way. Everything is underneath zippers. So all your adjustments buckles and clips are under here. It's also important to note that this line, the, the webbing that holds you in place, starts here, comes through here, goes all the way through the harness and comes out the other side. So if you blow a stitch, you're not going to lose your, your spider bar. Nice. Uh, another innovation that we introduced was the uh, attach your hand to pass the leash off on here. If you get in trouble, you pull this pin, it's going to blow you out, release you out of the situation. So if you're being dragged backwards on the beach, again, safety first. With these great. The, harness. the other thing that really really turned heads with the session harness was the fact that this harness comes as standard as a harness with leg straps. But the leg straps are removable. So underneath here, they come up. So it turn, it's either it's either or. or. Exactly. So this is wonderful for somebody that's indecisive, a beginner getting into the sport. They don't know if they want a seat harness or a waist harness. They can unclip. They can choose what they want to ride it as. It's also nice if you're somebody that's racing, you can put leg straps on to get a nice grunty feel. If you then want to go out and jump, you take the leg straps off, move it up that's to get a nice pivot point. Uh, schools love this harness as well because it gives their students the option as to what they want to do. And that is our session harness. Let's go and talk about the dry suits. Okay, no problem. They're on the corner. Okay, so Ocean Rodeo started out actually as a dry suit company. It was our very first product that we sold was the, was the Pyro line of dry suits. We've expanded that line into three different suits. We've got the Pyro Light here, which is a, uh, I guess you'd say cost-effective, yet still highly high-quality suit. It's made with the same uh, tri-laminate material, so you've got a polyurethane coated nylon. Heavy-duty brass tooth zipper. This is an important feature, actually, on our dry suit. We make our, all of our dry suits with a brass tooth zipper. We don't, we don't sacrifice on zipper quality. We don't want that zipper to crack open when you're on the water and get a cold flush down your back. It's quite dangerous. All of our suits feature a uh, neck dam here that drains away any water that comes in. We've got high quality latex of the neck, wrist, and ankles. The latex is adjustable in so far as if you want, if you find it's too tight, you simply cut back a ring and you'll find that it fits you much better. Uh, the suit itself is easily repairable. Patches are, are just welded on the inside. It's usable. You can we, we ship it with a repair kit. It's something you can do with a hair dryer and a little bit of uh, alcohol wipes. This suit here is our Pyro Pro. It uh, is our easily our best-selling suit. It features a front entry zip, so you've got self-entry. That, again, is a very important feature. People want to be able to get on the water by themselves. They don't want somebody to have to zip them up. It also features patented technology that only we offer. At the knees, at the waist, and at the shoulders, we have what are called flex panels. And so basically, you have a gusset of material that are held behind uh, air preen, neoprene to allow for stretch, again, at the waist, and the knees, and the, and the shoulders. So this suit is by far the best fitting and most accommodating to a range of motion suit on the, on the market today for dry suits. Awesome. This suit here was a new suit we released last year. It takes that concept, the captain cock suspension panel, to the next level. It's a bag suit underneath a lycra skin. And so essentially what the lycra skin does is it gives shape and form to the body of the suit. Burps out any air, you can take it surfing, you can duck dive it, it's got buoyancy of a three mil, warmth of a seven mil. Nice. So you layer up or down underneath it. This has been a very popular suit for us with the surfers, and uh, we are looking at expanding it into the kiteboarding market in so far as adding some some robust features to a kiteboarding specific nice. version of that suit. But well, are, and last nice. year, uh, you guys were the prize winning uh, Prize booth. winning booth, yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, you have like the inner sanctum of the Ocean Rodeo. Do you wanna see it? Yes, let's come on, let's go and let's go check it out. Come on, guys. We're going into the inner sanctum. Uh-oh. All right. <laughs> Everybody, check it out. <laughs> come here. here you, come over here, and I'm going to show you this shot of, uh, of Jeremy. I got a good shot of Jeremy. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, that's great, eh? <laughs> 
Yeah, he's that's a, awesome with a shark underneath water. Eh? He's such a fun guy to work with. Yeah, I really yeah, like him. No Good guy. Yeah, so. we like working with him for sure. So, so this is the uh, this is where the magic happens, where the orders are written, yeah. and uh, the kite order. And um, hey, dude, thanks for your time today. Absolutely, Ryan. All right, Thank brother. You. Yeah. Yeah.